everybody, it's Wednesday. How are you today? I am here to welcome you, first of all, for listening to this conversation and this realization of mine. And this is allowing me to voice my message in order to, I, I, today I come to speak in voice of many, many women that I have come to uh, have to come across and just realization of what I am living right now that might help somebody out there. So when we learn to voice our messages and our emotions and our things, it might resonate with somebody out there and that is hurting, that is needing this message. So hopefully this message is for someone out there that needs to listen to it. So help, um, hello and welcome. My name is Mike Sines, and I just he I'm here to tell you a little story. And I am a health and health and life coach, but as of today, I am I am a relationships coach. So today I want to talk about about acknowledgement and not only acknowledgement but even most importantly self-acknowledgement and let me tell you why this is so important self-acknowledgement can have the power of making us feel good strong at peace and independent and self-confident and powered and more which women out there does not want to feel more empowered and more confident and feeling good in her own skin so for so long i thought that as a woman we always need to appear mellow or attending everybody else's needs and just show our happy moments right show our happy moments or be a good girl uh, I was taught to be disciplined, like we learn as a little child to be disciplined and to become a good child and a good student and a good wife and that's how we are taught, to follow the rules, to let everyone decide what was good for me or what was best for me and this even carried on into like my father I would always say is like Oh, let's go to a restaurant and he would order everybody the same thing because it was easier for him so it was convenient for him but it was not teaching us children what we wanted to decide of the menu and it all starts with that it starts with our story and our experiences and, and what we carry with that story that takes us until our adult life and then when we want to do a business, right? So I was appearing to life as a happy girl, as a mellow, and that carried on into all stages of my life, adolescence, marriage, um, motherhood, and now business entrepreneur. So for eight years, I've tried to figure out the missing piece. There was something that I was needing and I didn't really know what. So I've been tapping into different things, doing different things, discovering a lot of things, reading a lot of books, immersing myself in knowledge, 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 but not really allowing things to sink in until I would, um, so I would always show up to the world as a happy mom, as a happy mother, as a happy wife, and even here in camera, right? Um, that I've been starting to do this more and more here in camera like happy moments and burying all my emotions that were kind of a little darker or my desires of or my needs and not being because of fear of not being likable how many out there are feeling the same way so if you're listening to this in the replay just hashtag replay whenever you're listening or wherever you're listening to this message. So um, uh, as women or me in, in circumstances, I was, didn't want to create turbulence or I didn't want to create discomfort because I thought in my mind that that would be so much more trouble to deal with. So 
I became to learn, I, I learned to be quiet or silent and not show my emotions. So men in Mexico say, there's a phrase that we say, calladita te ves más bonita, right? That it means that you look nicer when you're quiet and tamed. Do not disturb the waters. So then it's like it's male ru uh, are ruling the world, right? A place where my voice, my ideas could be heard like I could not, um, I, I was not telling what I was feeling. So for so long, I have been speak, I have not been speaking my truth of myself, which led me not even to like to do the unwanted, not knowing what is right or wrong, doubting myself, even deciding on a menu. It's like, what do I really want? Um, it, it has been strong and it has been hard and just for fear of asking questions. It's like, I don't know, so I would not raise my hand to ask questions or ask somebody what they need, but I would always provide, 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 provide. And what happens when we only provide? We do not fill inside. We are providing so much, we're a good providers, so at some point we feel empty. Raise your hand, who is there with me? you feel empty and i was feeling empty no matter how much my family loved me how much i did for everybody but i was feeling there was a missing piece so fast forward i decided to invest in myself in building a career that brought me joy and to the career to give back a place where my voice my ideas could be heard and maybe could be considered to somebody else and maybe they would be helpful for somebody else and i am absolutely loving it but there was still a missing piece i love helping i love coaching and i love serving other women but i still had some challenges and struggles in my life um, but i really didn't realize what was the specific path of clarity in my life? I still didn't define myself as who I really wanted to serve and what my specific mission is. I know I like to help others, but in what way and who? Until, until I invested again in myself and I hired a productivity coach. And yes, I am loving my Tuesdays. I'm loving my coaching sessions. And after four sessions, he, she kept asking me, who do you serve? And I would change every single week. I would come with something different. I try different things and it like, okay, there you go. You change it again. And like, yes, it's not feeling like right. But I felt still there was that missing piece. So just yesterday, yesterday was Tuesday, my favorite day of the week. I was and I had an enlightening and she asked me, what question do you think she asked me again? So who do you serve? And she asked me several times and I was doubting myself. I didn't really know a clear answer. But I had already been speaking about what I do, who I serve and what I do with my coaching and how the realizations that my clients have. And I started talking about all those things, all those beautiful things that are happening in the transformation of my clients, beautiful clients, by the way, I love serving them. So all along she could hear the answer that I had just in front of my nose. So she said again, she asked again, who do you serve? But I still could not see it. So it was so obvious and so simple. And our brain, brain likes to overcomplicate things, right? We love to overcomplicate things. And I could just not see it. So she said again, you are a relationship coach. And I said, no way. No, no, I'm not a relationship coach. I don't have a perfect relationship. But I, we're always thinking about one type of relationship. 
Well, guess what? Everything we do is a relationship. It's a relationship with our body. It's a relationship with our thoughts. It's a relationship with our loved ones. It's a relationship with that which is greater. So it's like, yes, this is exactly what I do. I love helping others become, have better relationship with themselves. And guess what? So that was like, that was my challenge. I could not see it. But what happened? I needed to go through all those stages in my life, through all those struggles to finally find that missing piece. And that is what coaching does. Coaching helps you figure out way, test the waters in different ways, because we all have a very unique story and it's unique to us nobody can steal that from us so we need to learn the lessons and guess what you're not alone wherever you are right now that's where you're meant to be but just learning from it it's an aha moment it's beautiful so you're not alone and if this is already resonating with you i figured out a way of teaching very simple steps for happier busy moms and i'm gonna be on a zoom call next wednesday as ma uh, teaching a master class on this five simple steps at 7 p.m center time so um so you can start tapping into your own realizations of self-worth because when you do you become unstoppable and I want that for you. I want that for me. I want that for you. And I want that for every woman out there listening. I know we have a lot of empowered women and we all resonate with different people. So when you have clarity or you know where you want to go, then life just becomes like easier and life starts making little confirmations of that decision that you're just making. So those confirmations are what we also can hear everybody say about manifestations, right? I've been doing a lot of inner work and all of a sudden this morning, yesterday I decided I'm a relationship coach, right? So this morning I went for, out for my run and I saw an older couple walking with their two dogs. And this is an older couple that I re constantly see, but I didn't, I never ta uh, saw them face to face there I'm on my bike or my run and they're farther away so but this time I had them one like just in front of me walking towards me I um, did my and they they seem like a very loving relationship like one that I would love everybody to experience without even knowing who they are or what their life is like. But just by their appearance, it seems like they're a very beautiful, loving relationship. So what did I do? I unplugged my audiobook that I was listening, that I was really excited about, and I just stopped. And I said, they're total strangers because they don't know me. And I said, I just have to say, you look like a beautiful, wonderful couple, and I want to acknowledge you self-acknowledgement remember we're talking about that acknowledgement uh, to say how beautiful uh, image you have as a, as a beautiful loving couple and loving your pets and just I love and admire you just uh, by seeing you and how do you think they felt they felt enlightened and we stopped there to talk about like for 10 minutes building conversation and I said, well, after listening to her, I said, Beth, if I were to ask you one question, what is one piece of advice that you could give me to, um, to create this? What has led you to create this in your life, to have this beautiful, loving husband that he was right there with her? And yes, she confirmed not only one piece of advice, but she gave me 10. And that is a confirmation for me because everything that she said is what I'm, I'm teaching my clients in my coaching sessions and these are so simple steps and we like to overcomplicate 
we like to we live in a world of uncertainty and this this is not the right way let me tell you this is we do not have to overcomplicate our lives i think life is meant to live beautifully and easily and um not easily there's challenges that we have to go through right but we can feel different about our lives so what i'm doing is in my master class i'll be talking specifically about this some of these steps that she mentioned or actions to have a loving relationship and this is going to be if this is making noise to you or this is resonating with you i would love for you to join me in this conversation next wednesday and do not take it uh, only for yourself share it with your friends and bring a friend and let's just chat about it and i'm gonna teach you some basic simple steps so i like to end this with a quote of martin luther king and he said i have a dream and what is my dream my dream is to empower women so that they no longer stay quiet so that they have a voice and the best relationships and so that they can become unstoppable. So if you are resonating with this, if you want to be part of this conversation, DM me or text a uh, link on the bottom and just text me a message link, please, or say in the comments and I will send you a link for you to sign up. It's totally free, but you do need to sign up. So I want you to thrive in your relationships, not just survive. See you soon and I'll talk to you soon. Have a great day and I'm praying for you for your best relationship with yourself. Bye-bye.